Good day everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Reynolds and the topic for today is going to be a discussion about ZOS Mail and in particular CSS MTP and migrating to it from SMTPD and Send Mail and why you need to do that and some considerations when you are doing that. I am a architect for communication, ZOS Communication Server as well as uh, ISPF and I'll be taking you through the material. Notice in the middle of the title chart here I have a link uh, to a copy of these charts on SlideShare. So if you'd like a PDF and you don't already have it, if you would like to uh, write down that URL real quick, it's a relatively short one, uh, and go pull down the charts, you could do so. Having said all that, we'll move forward to the agenda chart. Uh, we're going to start with a quick review of the three mail programs provided with ZOS Communication Server. Then we'll talk about some migration strategies to get from the first two of those to the third. We'll talk about all that in a few minutes. And then we'll talk about some things to hopefully make your migration to CSS MTP a little bit easier that we've provided in recent release of ZOS V2R2. So the first mail program we'll discuss, the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol Daemon, or the SMTPD NJ Email Gateway. This provides both um, SMTP client and server roles as far as the transfer of mail. On ZOS, the more common use case, by far the most common use case, is, is having batch jobs that are generating mail files that are being, being sent outbound to other systems. There's uh, also some limited outbound uh, mail going from TSO, but again, the batch use of mail is probably a little more common. In this uh, particular role, SMTPD reads the spool data sets and then uses the SMTP protocol to transfer the mails to other mail servers downstream. The SMTP server also has the capability to receive mail from SMTP clients for delivery to TSO users or for forwarding. That is a little less common use case on ZOS, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The thing about the SMTPD daemon is it's been around quite a few years. So the three mail programs we're going to be talking about today, it is by far the oldest. It is based on some very old technology and has not been significantly upgraded in quite a while. It does not support IPv6. It does not support security of, of TLS or SSL. Uh, most of you are under constant demands to encrypt everything. So if you want to be able to encrypt your mail transfers from ZOS to partner systems, uh, you can't really do that with a SMTP because it doesn't support that yet. And lastly, it does not scale particularly well. Again, largely due to the, the technology it's based on and its age. If you are not, if you don't have a lot of outbound mail, this is probably not a big deal. But if you are thin, sending thousands of emails, SMTP does not scale particularly well. Going to the next chart, the second mail program we'll talk about is SendMail. SendMail provides both SMTP client and server roles. Uh, so it can send mail. It also can receive mail for delivery to Unix mailboxes or for forwarding. Send mail is not nearly as heavily used on ZOS as SMTP is or even CSSMTP, which we'll be talking about in a minute. We did a survey of our customers uh, almost two years ago. We did a survey of a fairly large set of customers, and we asked them which mail programs they were using at the time. And at that time, approximately 15% were using send mail at least uh, to some degree. And if anything, in the intervening two years, that's probably gone down a bit. So it's clearly not a, a, a big um, pro usage on the ZOS platform at this time. Primarily, it is used probably by applications or services that issue send mail commands uh, to send mail to partner systems. So the next chart is titled Out with the Old and with the New. And it gets to the fact that we are about to remove SendMail and SMTPD from ZOS Communication Server. Uh, in late July, we issued the availability announcement for ZOS V2R2, and included in that availability announcement was a statement of direction that said V2R2 would be the last ZOS release to include SMTPD and SendMail. We had previously issued an SOD in February of 2014, which uh, was less specific. It just said we would be removing in a future release. But the SOD issued in July does make it clear that they will be gone after 2.2. So 2.2 was GA'd a couple of months ago, so the clock is sort of ticking now on that. The text of the SOD I have included on a chart in the appendix. So if you have the PDF, if you want to read the words, if you didn't see them in the availability announcement, 
you can certainly do that. Um, so this will be happening and our strategic direction for mail is through the CSSMTP mail gateway. Uh, we introduced that in ZOS V1R11, so that's about half a dozen years ago. It's been around quite a while now. And the whole idea was to do a ground-up replacement, a new program um, that would be more modern than the SMTP daemon that we had. So going to the next chart, CSSMTP, it provides the NJE mail gateway role. It takes mail from the JES spool mail files and sends them using the SMT protocol to partner mail servers. So very similar to the outbound mail role that you get with SMTP <coughs> daemon. Uh, but the advantages of over SMTP daemon are enumerated in those bullets below here. Um, certainly it supports IPv6. That may not seem like a big deal to most of you now. Uh, certainly most in the U.S. aren't don't seem to be too focused on IPv6 yet, but we are beginning to see definite signs of an uptick in IPv6 penetration in certain geographies and even in, in the U.S. over the last uh, couple of years. So at some point that should become significant. Uh, more significant, as I alluded to earlier, is the ability of CSSMTP to support application transparent TLS, ATTLS. But again, so many of you have encryption requirements now, so if you don't already have a need to encrypt your mail leaving ZOS going to partner systems, there's probably a good chance you will have to at some point in the future. Uh, CSSMTP supports ATTLS, making that uh, not only possible but relatively straightforward to do. CSSMTP was developed from scratch in V1R11, so it supports much newer technology, newer mail standards. It is very much an RFC compliant daemon. It pretty much follows a set of RFCs to the letter, and that's a good thing. For the most part, it actually can be a bad thing in a, in a way, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Performance and scalability was significantly improved when we delivered CSSMTP. And you see on the chart there a, a benchmark we did where we sent 4,000 emails, and with CSMTP, it, took, it went four and a half times faster to send those emails while burning half as much CPU. So a very, very good story there. Again, a lot of you may not be sending large volumes of email, and that may not be a, a real significant thing, but, but better performance is always good. Uh, and the last thing I'll comment about is that last bullet on the chart is that we have had some considerable migrations towards CSSMTP. The survey that I reference is almost two years old now, and at that point in time, roughly a third of the respondents had already migrated to CSSMTP. Uh, several others were in the process of starting a migration, so I, if we reissued the survey now, I believe we would probably more say in the half of our customers range as far as people that have migrated. Um, so we, we'll talk a little bit about the p potential inhibitor there and the way we've helped improve that with V2R2, and we'll get to that in a little bit later. Now there are some limitations with CSSPP. Uh, first of all, it does not provide an SMTP listener capability, which means you do not have any support for inbound email. So whereas SMTPD could receive mail from the Internet and deliver it to TSO users, you do not have that with CSSMTP. We, as we've gone through time, we've asked our customers about this, and in general, we don't see enough of that to be a big concern, but you have to evaluate what you're doing in your, your network and decide. Um, and as I said, good versus bad on RFC, RFC compliance. CSSMTP is very much compliant with the standards and it enforces some rules that SMTP never did. So we have had some customers we've, that have migrated to CSMTP and we asked them, well, what was good, what went bad? And they would have said, that, well, we had issues where mails that would flow through SMTPD with no problem got rejected by CSSMTP. And when we would help them look at it and try to determine the underlying cause, it was because CSSMTP was rejecting the, the email due to some RFC compliance violation that SMTP never enforced. So we're on good um, moral ground there as far as sticking to the RFCs, but that didn't help the customer with the problem of just wanting this email to get out. So in general, what we've done when we found out about those types of situations is we've taken an APAR to relax the uh, CSSMTP error checking to allow those types of emails to flow. Now, we can't guarantee that once we send one of these things out into the network that it won't hit a downstream server somewhere that will reject it for the same reasons as CSSMTP was. But if that's not happening today, it's not likely. So in general, we've accepted the APARs and tried to move on. The question for customers that haven't migrated to CSSMTP is how do I ensure that I don't hit those types of problems and have it impact my production workflow? 
and we will discuss that in a few minutes. In the meantime, let's look at the, the mail migration strategy as it applies to send mail. So if you're using send mail today and you're thinking that after 2.2, send mail is no longer available, what can you do going forward? Well, it is our intention to provide a replacement send mail command, or what we often refer to as the send mail thin client, which will basically accept send mail commands and then stage mail message to spool for CSS MTP to actually pull off and process and send. So the intent here is for an application that's in issuing send mail today or a service that's issuing send mail today to pretty much seamlessly go forward, be able to issue the exact same command, but we intercept it with this thin client and do what we have to do to allow CSS MTP to actually, actually process the email. That might require some administration changes on your end, you may have to have an alias set up to point to the thin client um, instead of the send mail daemon, that type of thing. But in general, we think that the individual applications and services should not be impacted. And that's, at least that's our goal with this. Now, one thing we do state in this is that CSS MTP will not be enhanced to support functions uh, that send mail provides that CSS MTP doesn't currently support. And in the, the bullets here, we give an example of 8-bit MIME support. Um, CSS MTP doesn't support it today. We're not planning to add support for that. But as far as the basic support, that should be there through this send mail thin client. We are pretty early in the design of the thin client right now. As we get further along in that design, we will provide a more complete list of supported and unsupported functions that the thin client will provide. Now another more general alternative you could consider, we're, we're on the next chart now, is to use something called postfix. Postfix is an open source alternative to SendMail that is designed to be a full SendMail replacement. Here in Zeo's communication server, we're not alone in our desire to move away from SendMail. The uh, Linux community, in particular the SUSE and Red Hat Enterprise Linux distributions, have already deprecated SendMail. And they're pointing their users to Postfix, and you can read about it at the URL I show there. Uh, again, it's designed to be a full replacement for SendMail. It was an open source project that actually had its starts in IBM Research and now is in the open source community. Uh, we in Zillow's communication server do not have any plans to provide Postfix as part of ComServer. However, we do believe it will be available through third party alternatives. And most specifically, Rocket Software, and many of you are probably aware Rocket uh, now handles the ported tools for ZOS. Rocket plans to provide a version of Postfix through the ported tools. And they, at this point in time, do have a beta version of that available for download if you want to try it out and, and see how it works. And there might be other third-party solutions that will be available later. Now, we, we cannot guarantee the, uh, the timeline or even the eventual availability of any third-party solution, but consider that we're nearly two years away from our next release. Rocket tends to have a much shorter delivery cycle than we, we do. They're already in beta, so there's a really good chance that their version of Postfix will be available long before that our next release where SendMail has gone away. So just an alternative to look at. The next chart talks about mail migration from SMTPD. And here the strategy is pretty clear. You need to be moving to CSS MTP. But let's refer back to the problem I was talking about a minute ago. How do you verify that CSS MTP is going to work with your existing set of messages? You can certainly do various tests on your own in a limited fashion, but if you have a lot of different batch jobs generating email, and there may be different formats and doing different things, maybe the first set you try works great, but then if you go into full production and you eventually get email from a, a different application that uh, CSSMTP rejects, well, now you've impacted your production workflow and you don't want that. So in ZOS V2R2, we provided a new CSS MTP test mode capability. And the test mode was a, 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 just a parameter for CSS MTP that said, let's have CSS MTP process the emails as normal, except not actually send them. Take it all the way through to the point of sending them, log any errors that we encounter along the way, but then discard the mail. Let the, the normal mail flow go out through SMTPD as normal and therefore have no impact on production at all. SMTP does its normal thing. CSS MTP is just doing enough processing to say if it would have worked if we were fully migrated. One, we have the new test mode switch for the CSS MTP daemon. 
We also have a new utility program that you'll be using as part of that called EZBM Copy. And EZBM Copy is a program that is designed to take the messages from the JS spool and make two copies of them, one to go to CSSMTP running in test mode and one to going to your, to your existing SMTBD daemon that's handling your, handling your production mail workload. So you sp split two copies of your mail stream. One is processed by CSSMTP just to look for errors, and the other just takes its normal path outbound. So this is function provided in ZOS v2 r2, which is you all know gen um, went general availability about two months ago. But we've also made it available via APAR to v2 r1. So if you're at 2.1 now, maybe you're not. Maybe you're going to skip 2.2, or you're not going to it in a while, and you want to get started on a CSS MTP migration. This is out there today. It's been available for a, about a month and a half, I think. So it, it is certainly there if you want to try it. The next chart is a pictorial representation of how this works. You have a ZOS application, a batch job, or you maybe you have a real TSO user that's um, writing emails. They're, they're getting spooled to Jazz. You now have the EZBM copy program that's running up here, and it has the same writer name associated with it as your SMTPD daemon did before. So it's taking all those the mails off the spool that were initially going to SMTPD, and it makes two copies of those and sends them to two different writers, one being CSSMTP and the other being what we in this picture is SMTPD1, which is a renaming of your production SMTP daemon. The SMTPD flow is the same as always. It goes outbound using SMTP to some partner mail server. Everything's great there. CSSMTP also gets a copy of the mail. It's going to log an error, any errors it finds and just discard the rest. So now you have a way to in investigate and see if there are any errors going on and correct them in a non-urgent, non-time non impacting fashion uh, where your pr production workflow is not affected. Okay, so the next chart talks about enabling test mode. It's a, uh, an op option statement. Test mode by default is no, but you say test mode equal yes, and it, you, you turn it on. Uh, note that it cannot be altered dynamically. If you decide you want to enable it or disable it, you have to recycle the CSSMTP daemon. You may need to make sure that your report statement is coded with a valid destination for your error report, because that's what you're going to be looking at here. The next chart shows a modify CSSMTP display configuration command and just shows you the current setting for test mode. In this case, in this particular output, it was not enabled. And lastly, how do you configure this EZBM copy utility? It has a single parameter, which is the writer parameter, which specifies the writer name that's going to be associated with EZBM copy. And then it's going to take spool files from the spool with the uh, where the writer name or the destination matches that writer parameter. So things that before before, before going to SMTPD, this gives you a way now to make sure they're routed to EZBM copy, and then it will make two copies of those and and send them to whatever the writer names associated with the two output cards that follow it in the JCL. So if we go to the next chart, we'll actually see the sample JCL, which I think makes it a little easier to understand. If you look at the second line in the JCL, you see EZBM copy with the parm of writer equal SMTPD. So and originally I had my SMTP daemon running with that name SMTPD. So now I'm sort of hijacking it for EZBM copy to use. It, now it's its writer name. Then that's followed with two output cards. One specifies the writer of CSSMTP, which is where I'm going to be running in test mode. And the other writer is SMTPD1, which is the renamed um, SMTP daemon for my production workflow. And the bullets down there just kind of take you through all that. You're going to change the writer name of SMTPD to SMTP1 by changing its job name. You'll start S CSSMTP in test mode with the writer name of CSSMTP. And then this JCL can be used to start e EZBM copy. So now the mails that were originally going to your production daemon are going to EZBM copy. Two copies are being produced from there. One to your production daemon, one to CSSMTP, and you're now running in test mode. Okay, so that is really the, the migration aid that we provided in 2.2 and again provided a 2.1 via APAR. Uh, so this next section I'm going to go through is another improvement we made to CSSMTP. It's not a migration aid per se, but one of the advantages and may, maybe one of the motivations for going to CSSMTP is the ability to secure your mail transfers. 
and doing that via ATTLS. And CSSMTP supports and inter interoperates very well with ATTLS. But we have had from one or two customers a concern related to the performance of this because the way this happens is whenever we CSSMTP sends its emails from a file, when it finishes that particular spool file, it drops the connection to the partner mail server. It moves on to the next spool file for another set of emails and reestablishes the TCP IP connection to the partner mail server. And this process continues. If we ATTLS enable the connection to the partner mail server, then as you guys probably are aware, whenever a new TCP IP connection comes up, there has to be a TLS handshake or a negotiation with the partner uh, to, to establish the TLS relationship. So if you are constantly bringing up a connection, doing a transfer, dropping it, and starting over again, you're repeating that TLS handshake many times. If you have a couple of large spool files with each with many emails, this is probably no big deal because you'll only have a few connections, you'll only have a few handshakes. But if your particular mode of operation means that you end up with a lot of spool files, each with just a very few emails, or maybe just with one email per file, then you can end up with a lot of TL hand, TLS handshakes, a lot of overhead with connection establishment, handshake, connection drop, repeat. And so at least one of our customers, maybe a couple of customers, have reported this as a performance concern they were seeing in their network. So as we go to the next chart, what we have done is provided an additional configuration option for CSSMTP that is a switch that says let's keep that TCP connection to the partner server up a little while after sending that last email from a given spool file because there's a good chance immediately or within a few seconds we're going to move on to another spool file and grab another email or two so let's just keep the TCP IP connection around and reuse it. Uh, so this is a, a, just a simple switch where you specify the number of seconds you would like the connection to remain open just in case we decide to send more email. And so you, maybe you select, say, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, but just a small number of seconds that you're going to leave this up to allow the next emails to flow without the extra handshake. This was also done in ZOS V2R2 communication server, but like the test mode, we have retrofitted it back to V2R1 via the APAR number you see on the chart there. And this has been available since, I think, April. So it's been out there quite a while. Some of you may have already picked it up. If you haven't and you're using CSSMTP and thinking about encrypting it, it's well worth you doing. And the next chart shows the, the statement involved. It's called connect. It's a connect idle on the timeout statement in the configuration file. And by default, it's zero, which means the previous behavior. We uh, drop the connection pretty much immediately after we process the last email in the spool file. But the recommended thing probably in most cases is to specify connect idle with a small number of seconds, again, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever the case might be, uh, to keep the connection up in case more emails are to be processed. And lastly, the next chart shows just a display of the config file again, which shows uh, the connect idle in the case of this configuration being coded at 60 seconds to take advantage of that. Okay, and that's it. Um, I'm, I'm taking you through a lot of stuff fairly quickly, but I want to give kind of a, a feel for the overall picture here. The three demons that is after 2-2 will now be down to one. The things that you need to think about in getting off send mail going to CSSMTP or getting off SMTPD going to CSSMTP and the, the test mode capability that we provide to via APAR in 2-2 to help you get there, hopefully.